Yeah, sorry to all the winemakers. Like, I'm an idiot. Don't listen to anything I say. <laughs> that does smell like a port -loot. Like, what, what are we doing? <laughs> G'day guys, welcome back to yet another episode of Blind Wine Reviews. And uh, of course, if you don't know by now, we're trying to build the most inclusive community of wine loving people. Come together, come and join us on our Discord channel. Links in the description below. Big thank you to Sometimes Always for, of course, providing all the wines. You get a 10% discount on the Discord channel. And yes, unfortunately, Noah is still sick with COVID. So Kerry is subbing in. Uh, of course, you got to meet Kerry last week. She did an absolutely cracking job uh, with the wines. Let's jump into it. Alrighty, wine number one. Beautiful dark red sort of color. Um, this looks like uh, olive tapenade, like that black olivey red color. Wow, cool, awesome. Um, uh, straight away, the smell is unmistakably Cabernet, Cabernet Franc Merlot. We're jumping into Bordeaux territory here. Very cool. I'm trying to think what I'm looking at and I just look at the spectrum of wine it could be. It's either like a really rich sort of lighter style grape or one of your darker yeah. style grapes made nice and light. Yeah, heat and spice. I don't know if that's from legs that we're talking about. If it runs slowly down the glass, there's one leg there. I don't know what that means though. I should have paid more attention to my father when I was young. Big disclaimer here, Lockie pre-warned us that this is going to be a pretty hectic uh, bracket of wines. And I mean, we just started with an absolute banger. This is awesome. This is like classical Cabernet done right. Very tasty. Um, I'd probably be looking at paying maybe 25 to 30 um, for a bottle of that one. And I might take a couple home. What is going on with this wine? It's like, Brenda always talks about like sadomasochism in wines and this is it. It hurts to drink. I don't like it. Uh, I'm sure Brendo's gonna wanna pour it directly into his veins. It might be, uh, maybe like a big heavy neb or something. Neb head, neb question mark. Oh, no, no. Least favorite wine that we've tasted in a long time. Oh God. And I would happily grab tall bottles because Southern Hemisphere, winter's approaching, and these are the wines that I really like to enjoy in colder weathers. What a great example. How cool. Moving on, we've got uh, whoa, this color, that brick tawny red, brilliant clarity. I'm thinking. A little bit of funk on the nose, um, not like so much barnyardy, slightly more of like a natural kind of character to it, not a fault sort of. Much nicer, much softer. Um, I feel like that last one, like I couldn't taste any like fruit or anything. It's Nebbiolo of the highest order, probably Barolo. Um, pretty powerful, pretty intense. Maybe like a light Syrah or something like that, potentially. Like it's a, uh, but all the wines that I've been guessing Syrah lately have ended up being some like really strange foreign varietal that I've never heard of. So I'm just gonna stick with lighter Syrah. Um, you'd probably be looking at like a rich steak, something really bitey and meaty to get into. So there's not a lot in that mid palette. It's definitely um, a bit more about the body of the wine rather than the body of the fruit. Uh, the tannins are full, but but svelte, almost like someone has rubbed suede literally across your teeth. You could tell it on the smell. Like if you know, you know. This is one of those wines that honestly, I think at $150 a bottle represents oddly enough and ironically so, incredibly good value. All right, wine number three. Very similar, similar color, uh, opulent. Wow, okay. Yeah, definitely another awesome wine. Uh, this is Pinot. So once again, it's a little bit of that lighter sort of colour. Bitier thing than the really velvet bathrobe sort of mouthfeel of a red wine that's really just sort of like holding you in its arms and telling you everything's going to be okay. It's all sort of like, hey, drink my wine! It's just a different guy, isn't it? <laughs> you took a step back there. You didn't like my angry wine voice. Great Pinot, great Nebbiolo, great wines in general. They speak to you straight away. Uh, for that, I'm going to be dropping at, at a minimum $80 a bottle. I know it's weird, it's weird. I haven't even tried the wine yet. You just know from the smell. You just know that it, it can't be lower than that. Medium red, not, yeah, eh. I've got a really, I've got a real big feeling that I'm gonna get a lot of dismissive looks from Rendo in the comeback together this week. He's gonna be like, oh, I've tried so hard to teach you and you're just dismissive of all this one for wine. But really just nice, good amount of free run juice. Um, and possibly a little bit of pressings in there just to give it a bit more body weight. I don't think Laura's gonna be very happy with me, Lockie. <laughs> I'm gonna be spending a lot of money. Alrighty, on to line four. We're looking at a bit more of that dark colour that we had in the first one. Um, nice, rich, vibrant crimson. Something's gonna grab me by the horns here. Something's gonna have to, because it's so rare that I... 1-3-1, I'm gonna disappoint Dad. Dad being Brendan this time. Oh, cool. 
dense, powerful, black currant, rhubarb, high acid. For some reason, my head's already in Rhone Valley. For some reason, it's like Carignani. I can't see this being a Shiraz, um, but it'd definitely have to be one of the cooler climate styles, not so much like Big Bold Barossa style that we're all used to here in SA. Um, yeah, lovely. So all that stuff I was saying before about like, drink my wine, this is giving me a hug and telling you everything's gonna be okay. Six bottles. It was on the, on the cards for a clean sweep, but six bottles, only because wines, this is a big wine, and wines that are this big, a lot of work to get through. Definitely say for the um, sort of bolder character as well, you'd probably be looking at sort of something that's potentially been handpicked to get the best of the bunch. Say maybe 45 for this one. Personally, don't really like spending more than $20 a bottle of wine, so <laughs> I'd give it a miss, but this is definitely one that I'd take a glass of if Brenda brought it to the party. Uh, fifth wine of the lineup, I've got something that's actually got a slight haze to it, so uh, probably is, or definitely not been uh, filtered, naturally settled, and probably younger than we would expect, you could say. It smells a little bit like a band-aid, that sort of, I know how to phrase it, but that like stickiness. Plastic isn't quite a mineral, so it's not minerality, but there's something there. <laughs> <coughs> it smells like right before the headline act public toilet at a music festival. Like, it's been there all day and it's summer. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Yuck. Aside from the reductiveness, and when I keep bringing that up, it is this sort of, let's call it what it is, a little bit farty. I find it a little bit much in this wine. It's a little bit overbearing. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It is It is quite indicative of styles like Out of the Rhone Valley and Syrah in particular uh, tend to go down this path. I mean, it's a solid wine. There's a little bit of a tang at the back of the palate. Not super appealing on the nose. 17 to 20 for a bottle of this one. Tasty, but smelly. It's not gonna be cheap though, because you couldn't make that for cheap because someone's done some things to it to make it smell like that. So it's gonna cost money. 48 bucks and one bottle far away from me. All right, last wine of the lineup. Oh, cool, really interesting. A little bit muted, quite quiet. Getting back into that lighter and brighter sort of style. Um, lovely sort of brighter red. Um, light, but not that sort of tawny brown that we've been seeing in a couple of other wines today. Smells like the uh, fruity yum yum section of the cocktail menu, which is the red wine that I like to drink. Mmm, yeah, 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 that's way better. <laughs> oh, thank God. I don't think it's gonna come at a premium. I think it's gonna come a little bit cheaper. Chuck on 35 bucks and I'm gonna buy 12 bottles. As much as my little mini review here was indicating that I wouldn't, I think it's delicious. I think that's cool. There's a really nice elegance to this wine that I'm questioning if it comes with a price tag or not, or if it's just a really good quality wine at a really great price. I'm thinking Pinot Noir because I like Pinot Noir and I like this. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with Pinot. High quality, clean, juicy, fruity, sour, yummy. Pinot, 80 bucks, give me 12. And for that, if it comes anywhere less than 40 bucks, I think it's actually gonna be a really good deal. Let's see what the rest of the guys think. All right, welcome back. Uh, guys, what uh, what do we think? That was that was cool. I mean, we haven't had six red wines at least for a, a while. Now, it's been a hot minute since we had the six reds. There were some real standouts. There was some standout. There was a lot of standouts for me and there was a couple that actually missed the mark a little bit. That's but... what I meant by standouts. <laughs> <laughs> Cherry, how, how'd you go? How'd you go? Second week in a row, what are we doing? A little bit of palate fatigue towards the end. Yeah, like you guys are saying, there's some standouts and there's some that kind of blend in a little bit, so. Yeah, we'll go through them one by one and give you the rundown. Well, wine number one. Uh, I I enjoyed this, actually. I picked up 12. I thought it was fantastic. Thought it was a Cabernet-esque, Bordeaux-esque sort of thing. But New Weldy. I thought it was a pretty cool wine. Ticks a lot of boxes. I was 60 bucks and 12 bottles. Same, except one bottle. <laughs> I was only 25 to 30, so... How, how many were you, were you into? A couple of bottles. Well, <laughs> Lockie, what did this wine set us back? Oh. Cool, cool. Good good price for, for uh, what I think it could be. And Lambert. Sarah. Sarah. Well off base. Well off base, not a Cabernet. Whole bunchy Syrah, and of a very high order as well. Lambert, uh, Luke Lambert does an incredible job. With yeah, it. if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, white pepper spice, well done. White pepper spice, it actually says black pepper on here. Does it? Oh, yeah, well, it's you know, pretty, pretty I just, It is Australian. Yeah, yeah, uh, Victoria, Yarra Valley. Cool. Yeah, yeah, so funnily enough, 
you know, your common around Nebbiolo does kind of stack up because Luke also is responsible for some of the, I would probably say, Australia's premier Nebbiolo. There you go. Um, and definitely one of the most sort of like celebrated producers uh, of that. So <laughs> moving on to another one that I was massively about and I think is going to set me back a lot of money. I was not near that at all. I put it down to uh, 2025 and I did not choose a bottle. I will be You'd so take stoked. more than 12. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah getting Hell older. yeah. What do we got though, Lockie? Still cheap for you. Still cheap, still cheap, 58. <laughs> Very that good is Lange Rosso territory. That is Lange Nebbiolo, holy crap. Good call. Continually, every single week we do this, when there is a Lange Nebbiolo that's thrown in, it is always punching above its weight. Yeah. Lange Nebbiolo has been, to some, to some. Yeah, no, like as you're saying, I, I just mixed it up because this was the Nebbiolo that I wasn't gonna like that you did. Um, for Neb heads though, sitting at home, like just absolute tannin monsters. I've just seen this now four or five times in a row where the Lange Nebbiolo is, is showcasing all the hallmark standards of fine barrel and Barbaresco. Mm. I'm just stoked, yeah. stoked. And yes, I'm gonna be buying some. It's gonna happen. On to one number three, the next banger, 12 bottles, 80 bucks. Knew it, knew it. Um, yeah. One bottle? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, this is contemporary dance. Like, I get that it's cool, but I'm just, I'm not, it's not for me. This is oh, absolutely amazing. It smells amazing so peanut. good. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was a bit heavier than a Pinot. Yeah? Like yeah, Grenache? Uh, yeah, Grenache. Oh. Mark. Could be, certainly could be. Whole bunch of Grenache. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, light, bright, fruity, a uh, little bit jammy on the fruit as well, which sort of led me more toward Grenache than Pinot. For sure, yeah. the, the acid is kind of, it's not as high as I, I would have expected it to be. You could be on, on the money there. Where were we at with bottles? Oh, uh, I was two. Two? Yeah, which, I mean, tends to be my standard of high these days, so. Cool, all right, two bottles. I was on 12, you're on? Well, I was on one, but now I'm on six. <laughs> oh, okay, we, we, we got him up, we yeah, got him yeah, up. Yeah. All right, uh, how much is this setting me back, Lockie? Oh, yeah, that's good Good Pinot territory. There's definitely something on there. Sailor Six Horse. No. Fantastic Pinot out of Tassie. I thought this was Burgundy. These guys are punching. These guys are punching well above their weight. That's that's utterly fantastic. Tazzy Pino, Lange Nebbiolo. Yeah, Tazzy Pino seems to be the vibe. What we hope though is that Tasmania can continue to make incredible Pinot Noir, and increasingly so as the globe continues to heat, as long as it doesn't go underwater. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna make Tasmanian wines more expensive. So maybe if you're looking to invest, Speculate, speculate. Yeah, coal and Tasmanian Pinot Noir, great combination. <laughs> this was an interesting one that vexed me. I was on, I started to drop down six bottles. Where were you guys at with wine number four? I had six as well. Uh, I thought that there was a little bit of sort of like apple rhubarb pie sort of thing going onto it, which I quite enjoyed. And as soon as I tasted that, I decided that I liked it. Um, then I tried to find it again and I couldn't find it again, which confused me. It's a big wine. It is a big wine. It's a big wine. You gotta work through, your way through that. But it doesn't attack you like that one. I did actually say, uh, I could be putting my uh, foot in my mouth, but I did say Shiraz. Yeah, I reckon I reckon that's a really good shout. That's where I'll be resting my head is, is on a really am amazing sort of old school Syrah. I'm going to stick with rhubarb juice personally, but <laughs> could go anyway here. How much is this said in a spat, Lockie? Hey, that's what I said. 50 bucks, good, good. Finally got something right. 45, where are you at? Same 45. Bad. Shiraz, Shiraz, hey. Dominica, Dominica. Yeah. 2018 by the looks, or 15. Yeah. A really amazing Beechworth uh, producer. Uh, you know, one of the, the the premier Beechworth producers, and there are not many like of them just in general. It's just it's not really a massive place, mm. um, but they are known for producing this uh, amazing style of of Shiraz, and it is. It's a very traditional style, uh, done really well. No, it's brawny yet gentle in its own way, like a big mate of yours that's a real hugger, and I think that's a really good description of this wine because it is like a big wine, but it doesn't. Go, ah! Like it's. <laughs> I thought it was a really good example of old school. And if you guys at home are into things that are a little bit old schooly, and you find like a lot of the the new sort of natty wines are a little bit too far for you, this is an amazing one. This is really really good. This is, in my opinion, the best it sort of gets when it comes to those traditional styles. Moving onwards, uh, this next wine, I had one bottle. Dude, why does it smell like that? That's it's reduction. <laughs> we it's talking reduction. about? Where where were you at with this? <laughs> You're not a fan? <laughs> How many bottles Look, did you take I mean, home though? Uh, I took home none. Yeah. None. Uh, like, it's see, rough. the thing about recognizing fault in wine is trying to look past it to see the wine for what it is if it didn't have the fault. Because it could always be a one off bottle. You never know. Yeah, no, it sucked. Um, 48 bucks, <laughs> one bottle. <laughs> uh, interesting that you went really high. I was actually in between 40 and 50 as well. Yeah, uh, no. I think expensive this is like... shit always disappoints. <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, where were you at with it? How much did you reckon to see you back? I was 17 to 20, but that's because that I that's would That's what you would say. No, they, couldn't, they couldn't make that big of a mistake for that little amount of money. There oh. wouldn't have been enough time for them to do that in the <laughs> winemaking process. All right, how much, are we, how much are we spending on this one? Ah! They were efficient with their mistakes. Split the difference. Split the difference. <laughs> Kerry was closer, though. Well, it's Unicozo. Oh. What? <laughs> what is that? It's a woman it's like eating a cherry. Frederick. Oh, mate. Oh. It's one of the nicest guys in wine. Steve Crawford. Ah, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Sorry, brother. Yeah, having tried some of Amazing his other wine. wines, once again, there are some hit and misses. But yeah, his other wines have always hit the mark. The for Pinata me, so is just I'm, like one of my favorite yeah. all time wines uh, from Adelaide. He does, he does an incredible job. And he's also like one of the, the stalwart examples of making like artisan wine. I mean, he's artisan is, is the truest way. Like the guy is uh, absolute romantic and one of the people that I respect the most in the industry. It's just a shame to see the wine looking like this. I pray it's a bottle variation thing. That's why the cookie crumbles. Totally Done fucked up, Steve. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sure you're a nice guy. <laughs> All right, uh, wine number six. Uh, Back onto the winners, 12 bottles. Order. Yeah, bang it. Great way to finish. Absolute perfect way to finish. So I had my highest take homes of three bottles. Look at me, cheap skate over here. Clearly, obviously, wine will line up for us. Yeah. But it is also the wine that I literally was like, I had no idea what it is. I don't know where it came from. I don't know what it's made from. For me, that's what makes wine special. Yeah. But deliciousness. Yeah, hell tasty. All right, how much is setting us back? Nice. What a bargain. Gonna, oh, nice. Trousseau Noir. Trousseau Noir. That is the most delicious Trousseau Noir I've tried. So, the other day, I was trying to remember the name of this winery, and now that I've seen it, so you know when you have those moments, and you're just like, it's gonna bug me for the rest of the day? It's been bugging me for three days now. Terra Terra. Finally, Terra Terra. Trousseau, Pinot Noir, Mondeuse. Mon Mondeuse. Mondeuse and Cabernet Franc. Franc. So, a bit of a, bit of a, uh, a mozza, mitza, uh, mix of different gra uh, grape varieties. Uh, really interesting, so uh, Xavier Bizo is the proprietor of uh, this particular winery. Again, you know, talking about hopeless romantics, he's one of the most hopeless romantics when it comes to, to wine, and he actually st sticks with this sort of store vision of uh, mm. you know what he expects from him. And amazing, you know, we're like, we don't know what grape variety it is, we don't, not about that, it's actually about the style. Which is That's cool. what the blend is for. Also, interesting, you know, Xavier Bizzo, the Bizzo family uh, owns a little winery, a tiny little artisan at Bollin Bollinger. Heard of them. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, sorry to all the winemakers, like I'm an idiot, don't listen to anything I say. <laughs> <laughs> that does smell like a port like what are we doing? <laughs> port wines, amazing French varieties out of the Adelaide Hills. Yeah, and, bangers. Uh, a, a Banging Lunga Nebula. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Kerry, for two weeks of wonderment standing in place of Noah. We'll see you next week. Till then, we'll be here. Bye.